Welcome to the body imaging cases. Which of these two lesions is consistent with typical hemangioma? Case 52, case 53, both of them or none of them? The correct answer is case 53, is a hemangioma. You see in case 53, the extreme hyperintensity of the lesion and the extremely homogeneous nature of the lesion in contradistinction to case 52, which shows heterogeneous signal intensity. Case 52 has been a metastasis and case 53 is a typical hemangioma. The learning point is that typical hemangioma is extremely bright and extremely homogeneous on T2 weighted images. Case 54. This lesion is most probably A, hemangioma, B, high dotted cyst. The correct answer is A, hemangioma. On this T2 weighted images, we see a giant hemangioma with a central cleft. Unlike the rest of the hemangioma, which is composed of intravascular spaces containing blood, the central cleft is not communicating with the blood stream and contains only fluid. Therefore, it is not enhancing on the gadolinium enhanced MRI and it shows more facilitated diffusion than the rest of the hemangioma. So the learning point here is that intralesional fluid containing cleft is one of the recognized features of giant hemangioma. Case 55, this lesion is a hemangioma, A true, B false. The correct answer is true. Although the enhancement on the early arterial phase here is not typically peripheral, the appearance on the delayed images of near total enhancement of the lesion is typical of hemangioma. The learning point is that enhancement may not be perfectly peripheral in hemangiomas on the early dynamic gadolinium enhanced MRI images, but the delayed fill-in of the lesion with contrast agent remains a typical feature. This is the appearance of the lesion on the diffusion weighted images. As we expect in hemangiomas, the diffusion restriction is less than that of the liver. Hemangioma does not show strong diffusion restriction. On the T2-weighted images, there are spots of hypo-intensity within the lesion, and this may represent small spots of thrombosis. And this is the same lesion on ultrasonography, showing these spots of thrombosis within the hemangioma to be hypoechoic within the typically hyperechoic hemangioma. Case 56, these lesions are most probably metastases or biogenic abscesses. On your left hand side, you have diffusion weighted images with B value of 800 second per millimeter square. And on your right hand side, you have the ADC map. The correct answer is metastasis. There is very strong diffusion restriction at the periphery of the lesion, showing itself as very high signal intensity on the diffusion weighted image with a B value of 800 and very low ADC on the ADC map. Unlike the center of the lesion, which does not show the same degree of diffusion restriction. What we expect in an abscess is a very strong diffusion restriction in the center of the lesion because pus is very thick and has a very high diffusion restriction. On PET CT, we see hypermetabolic uptake of the FDG in the whole lesions, not only at the periphery, which tells us that the central part of the lesion does not contain fluid, but contains a tumor tissue with a certain degree of degeneration. 
The patient has also lung metastasis. Case 57. These lesions are most probably hepatocellular carcinoma or metastasis. We have here the early contrast enhanced CT. And this is the delayed contrast enhanced CT. And the correct answer is metastasis because here we have the typical peripheral washout sign. So the peripheral part of these lesions enhanced on the early contrast enhanced CT and then became less dense in comparison to the central part of the lesion and also to the surrounding liver on the delayed contrast enhanced CT. This is the typical peripheral washout sign, which happens in metastasis, but does not happen in hepatocellular carcinoma, which shows most of the time complete washout involving the central part and the peripheral part of the lesions to the same degree. Case 58. This lesion has been diagnosed as a hemangioma in 2013 and has increased in size in six years. A. Still it can be a hemangioma. B. This increase in size is against a hemangioma. This is the Sagittal MRI images of the lesion in 2013 and in 2019. The correct answer is still it can be hemangioma. Although the lesion has increased in size, it still keeps the same typical imaging features of hemangioma, notably the extremely bright and extremely homogeneous signal intensity on T2 weighted images. The learning point here is that hemangioma may increase in size over time. This is the gadolinium enhanced MRI of the same case in 2013 and in 2019 showing the typical peripheral centripetal enhancement of the lesions. Case 59. This lesion is most probably A. Focal nodular hyperplasia, B. Metastasis, C. Hemangioma, and D. None of the above. The correct answer is focal nodular hyperplasia. On this color Doppler ultrasonography, you see vessels inside the central part of the lesion, rarely encountered inside metastases because metastases are foreign tissue in relation to the liver that grow by expansion and take their blood supply from the surrounding liver but do not have vessels inside. Hemangiomas are composed of small blood filled spaces, but it does not have also central vessels. Focal nodular hyperplasia, on the other hand, is very well known to have a central artery inside the central scar. And here on this color Doppler ultrasonography, given that the blood going to the transducer is encoded red and that which goes away from the transducer is encoded blue. You see the central vessel here with a color pattern that tells you that the direction of blood flow is from the center to the periphery. It is also useful to sample the Doppler spectrum inside this lesion to show the pulsations and the to prove its arterial nature. The learning point here is that the presence of an artery inside the lesion on color Doppler ultrasonography is one of the diagnostic features of focal nodular hyperplasia. Case 60. This lesion is most probably A. Hepatocellular carcinoma B. Metastasis C. Hemangioma and D. None of the above. You are provided with unenhanced and contrast enhanced CT. 
and also in phase and out of phase T1 weighted MRI. The correct answer is none of the above. This is the typical appearance of spared liver parenchyma in the fatty liver. You see the fatty liver on the unenhanced CT showing very low radio density, while the lesion is still having some hyper density and it is enhancing more than the rest of the liver on the contrast enhanced CT. This is because this part of the liver is receiving systemic venous supply more than portal venous supply and the systemic veins do not have the emulsified fat to the same degree as the portal blood do and therefore this part of the liver typically at the segment 4 anterior to the right portal vein shows less steatosis than the rest of the liver. This is also proved by the in-phase and out-of-phase MRI which shows drop of signal in the out of phase MRI of the whole liver except for the part which is spared anterior to the right portal vein. The learning point here is that focal sparing of the liver parenchyma in steatosis hepatis is typical at segment 4 anterior to the right portal vein. This part of the liver is receiving systemic venous blood into the sinusoids more than the portal venous supply.